I'm Tom Ray from the band Lorenzo's Music, and you're listening to the Lorenzo's Music Podcast. I got together with a band called Audio Farm and spoke to them for a bit. Now, the reason that I found them was because they were posting things on Facebook that just kind of intrigued me. So first they had this logo, and the logo I couldn't really tell what it was. And then they started posting pictures of themselves, but next to those pictures were drawings of animals that were of each member of the band. Anyway, I was intrigued, so I reached out and wanted to see if they'd meet me to talk on the podcast. We met at their studio, and it turns out that it's also a place where they do media production. So I sat down with a couple of members of the band, and we talked about making music and just kind of playing out in town here. I want, to, I want to say basically it was the logo is, is what turned me on to you guys. Well, I think we all came up with the idea. Uh, the logo comes hand in hand or goes hand in hand with the name itself, you know, Audio Farm. We have been playing roughly, I'd say, four or five months, and it's a collective of very different personalities and very different musicians that wasn't really put together on purpose. At the end of the day, we were all jamming at uh, a gig that we needed to to play, and a couple of people weren't able to play, so we basically brought this collective of musicians together to do that gig and the sound was so cool and so unique and so interesting and like we meshed so well together that it just evolved into what turned into audio farm today so being a farm you know a collective a farm has different areas that together create that big huge piece of land and 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 nutrition so the band is kind of the same way you know at the end of the day it's it's everybody has its own little purpose and its own little character that contributes to the whole thing they just happen to be friends you knew that were musicians i mean how did how did you know the people to call when you had this this show that you're talking about where you needed to add people well everybody who plays in the band has been playing in the madison music scene for for quite a while or involved in the madison music scene and somehow and they're all very talented musicians a lot of them still have their own independent projects running simultaneously as well as solo artists like sander for example still is signed by sunday night records which is a local record label here in town. Uh, Skyler plays uh, out independently as well under his name, under his artist name, Skyler Nunn. Uh, and, and Jake does a lot of comedy, local comedy here in town. He's great. He's a super funny guy. You should check him out. We were just all really good friends and we all knew each other from the Madison scene already. And we all hang, hung out and had played together in different projects. So it was just a, a natural a natural way of coming together, kind of. And what would you say the musical style that you guys do is? So I was the most recent addition to the group, and it was sold to me as kind of like an R&B-driven group. But I'd say, like, so far we're just taking singer-songwriter ideas and putting a full band behind it. I think we're still kind of trying to figure out exactly what the sound is going to be. If you want to describe it somehow, it'd be very neo soulish. So we, we play a lot of Sanders original songs and he's a great singer songwriter, plays acoustic guitar and has a very soulful, very R and B ish kind of voice. And then we have Maddie Vay, which is our, our keyboard player. And uh, she just has a set of pipes that are amazing. And she's also a very, very good composer, very soulful kind of singer. So we tend to like roll a lot more towards that laid back kind of neo soul, late nineties, early two thousands kind of classy. Vibe. Now you have like six, seven people in the group. Seven. Seven. I know that that's not an easy task. How does the actual songwriting process go? Different ways that we do it. We have a Facebook message group that goes on all the time, which is kind of daunting. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you turn away from ten minutes, and you have one hundred and fifty messages that you got to scroll through, and it is pretty crazy. So, it's well, like, I mean, you're sharing audio on it, or you just ideas, everything. It's like literally all, everything is in this chat space. So, like, we'll take polls, like you know, you can do the Facebook polls and stuff. So, like, we'll do the polls for ideas. I think the core, like, rhythm section and surrounding players are really like talented, and they kind of have a really good feel for where to go. So when someone who isn't like very classically trained comes in and says like, "Hey, I have this thing," we're really quick to like build a song around it. Just no. Well, is this a I recorded it on my phone and here I'm sharing that, or do do they have multi DAWs at home? We have a piano. Like every time they come here, it's like they play it on the piano or they play it on the guitar, and then we're just like, "Okay, let's go." Like how we kind of operate is like people will have an idea that would be a good song for the band to make a song around, whether it's their own idea or a cover or a certain style to play a certain cover. It's like, 
we try to incorporate things as best we can that are of the vibe we want to put out, whether it's a cover or an original, but at the same time, like the genre will switch from writer of song to writer of song. Sander and Maddie being the ones that are writing a lot of the songs that we're putting together at the moment, they're the ones that take on a larger portion of that set, but we do move around, so there's no real lead singer. So Skylar might come up and sing three songs. So they switch in- instrumentation too, or yeah, just sure. singing? Yeah, yep. okay. so I so play bass, but on a couple songs I'll switch with Xander and he'll play bass. Yeah, and I'll play guitar and sing, and like we just kind of flip roles. And yeah. Carlos will hop out of percussion and okay. hop on guitar. And I like that. Yeah, so we're always like it's like a revolving door. It, it makes it interesting for somebody that comes to a show to be able to stay on their toes okay well xander's singing four or five songs and then all of a sudden the trumpet player will come out and sing a couple of songs and maybe they'll switch an instrument but the whole vibe of the show maintains itself we're actually in your studio so uh, do you want to just tell a little bit about how this place came to be? Uh, so we're in Mod Media Productions right now. Uh, Mod Media Productions mm-hmm. is on Sayin Road, connected to Wisconsin 57. Uh, it's a one-stop audiovisual production agency in town. So we basically produce any type of creative media. So photography, videography, web development, graphic design, audio production, all the way down to branding, um, mostly corporate work. So a lot of business to business kind of stuff, but, um, being musicians and being artists, we're pretty well connected with the music scene here. So we do a lot of live shows, um, band portraits. The gist of it is that this is a, a audiovisual production agency. Yeah. So it's a for those who can't see it, uh, it's a two-story uh, office, and the whole bottom area is uh, audio production. So it's all padded walls, recording studio-style rooms, and um, this is where we practice every week. Filled with a lot of really cool keyboards. I was down there looking at a bunch of them before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You have an old Fender Rhodes that reminds me of the one that I had not too long ago. Uh, you guys are still kind of playing live. How do you get the word out there, or how do you plan to, or how do you find these shows? Yeah, with a band of seven people, I mean, and we're all have our own projects mm-hmm. going simultaneously for the most part. We have our own audience that we bring to each show. The two people in the band really spearhead the social media. Like Jake, I think you do, right? Some Instagram posts yeah. <laughs> when we have when we have photos to post. Uh, Maddie does a lot of that stuff. We had a photo shoot done recently and starting to get some media out there. We also are running with the whole farm situation quite a bit. So each one of the band members has a animal associated to the band member and we have okay. cartoon sketchups that are online on our page that you can check out right. uh, that are pretty cool. Our graphic designer is wonderful. Let's see. So Jake They're is the cool. ram. Uh, Ryan's the wolf. Skylar is the alpaca. Maddie's the Mine cat. <laughs> Sanders the, the donkey. And I don't know if I can say this live, but uh, mm. I'm the cock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, who made yeah. these decisions? Did you guys just choose what we you wanted? wanted on which animal we thought would be the best fit for each one of our characters and, and, and styles. What do you feel right now is the platform where you get some of the most interaction or the most response? Right now, it's literally just trying to let people know where we're going to be so that <coughs> they come check us out. So we can get some some data for ourselves and get some experience playing out as a group. And what platform is most relevant shifts based on what your like current priority is. So the stage that we're at, I think having those images on Instagram or like little videos of us rehearsing, working stuff out, that stuff goes a long way. And then as we step into the recording phase, you know, we'll have to explore what kind of cataloging or streaming uh, platform we should be using. I mean, it's just kind of like. You know, that that kind of evolves. Even though you guys have established stuff that you've been doing for a while, it's actually really interesting to talk to a band that's kind of still in the building stages right now. It's lucky that people have approached us to come play live because I feel like that's what's kind of driving it right now to be able to increase like regularity of how often we're getting together because like we have to for these gigs. This is a good thing to have a little carrot dangling in front of your face. With the fact that you have other things that you're doing, how do you calendar this? Uh, How do you guys even calendar getting together, especially if you have other bands or other opportunities or other business ventures that you're doing? How do you go, okay, let's all seven of us get together somehow? You might notice there's only three of us here right now. Um, (laughs) So yeah, it's tough. I 
reserve Sundays for rehearsal. And it's been pretty religious that way. Sunday we're nights. we're really lucky, as you said before, because I'm such a big band. Everybody has their own schedules and whatnot. Um, and I've played in so many bands that that's like one of the biggest to make happen is is getting everybody together in one single room. But it's it's it hasn't been that complicated with this band because, as I said, everybody's super excited about what's coming out, and everybody's just very passionate about how everything's sounding. Here and there, we've had off practices as well, in which, for example, like Jake will get together with Sander just only guitar parts just to figure those portions uh-huh. out. Yeah. Uh, Ron and myself are going to start doing just exclusively percussion practices just to be able to get the rhythm section down quicker so that we all get into one single room, that three-hour, four-hour practice that we do will be as productive as possible. What do you think about people using your music for different things like say people find your music and using it for video or do you what do you think of that kind of online sharing i as a video production company we do that quite a bit and we offer we do work with different licensing companies that offer those kind of services and i really enjoy it and i have discovered different artists by doing that so i don't see mm-hmm. a problem with it as long as it's respected and it's used for the proper reasons mm-hmm. let's put it that way so i guess that the where that's going to be placed if it's like this odd weird kind of video that has like some sort of slander and yeah. oddness to it then maybe no yeah, maybe but you don't uh, end up on like yeah. info wars or something like yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we just recently did a video for an organization that schools for haiti did a recap video for it and i went online and i found this beautiful song from this guy that uh, had gone down to haiti to help out and he had lived there for like maybe like six months to seven months and uh, while he was there he was an audio engineer he got so inspired he went and like recorded this awesome folk song all a cappella with like seven eight parts it just sounded so beautiful and whatnot and i reached out to him and i wanted to use the song for the video project and of course it went hand in hand with why he did the song in the first place so it worked out that way but of course if if the song can help promote something else that is in line with what we find interesting cool and and, and, and good for humanity, then I guess, yeah, why not? My band puts our stuff out under Creative Commons license, which is means you're free to use it, but you also have to release it under the same license. That's why I ask, and we've had some weird opportunities and our stuff has been used in very odd things like just recently we found our music in a russian gaming app uh it's called my right Right, and that's what i'm saying so it it was one of our songs that was used in a car radio on this uh game called miami crime simulator so it's like a one of those drive around run people over type things and we just happen to be in one of the cars it was cool and and that's why i asked because it's some Times, you know, with copyright and people going, they want to monetize online, but what about the opportunity of letting people who create videos and have no money using music for videos? So that's why I like to ask that. Well, once we produce the album, we'll see if we want to give it out for free or we want to sell tunes or we want to put it on an album and sell them all together. I think that as the music industry is going nowadays and how it went when everything went digitized and everything went up to mp3s to the cloud and people could have access to it the musicians themselves uh, didn't really get a lot of money off of this the, the sale of that music you know at the end of the day uh, the musician makes the money off of you know performing out live and getting people on the shows and so at the end of the day i mean seeing how everything's evolving getting your music out to as many people is much more interesting for a band than actually trying your best to be able to charge somebody 15 dollars for an album like Bandcamp example like they could pay whatever they want like you'd have the minimum be zero dollars i think that's probably the route we would go if we were to sell music physical copies We'd probably sell those, you know, because we paid money to sell those. But, I mean, if we put them online, people generally expect stuff online to be free. But here's the funny thing that I think of with Bandcamp. That's the only platform that doesn't give you money for streaming, though. And that's what I think is so funny. They built a music cart and one that's easily accessible, but they don't give you any money for streaming. So two people just walked in here. So uh, who might you be? I'm Maddie. Um, I'm vocals and keys. I'm Ryan. I'm a trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> to go off of your last question about yeah. music being used for other things, I f- would find it very flattering. I feel like, the, yeah, the day you hear your song being played and it's not you, it's, mm. that says a lot about the, the work and the, the song itself. I've never really thought of a, a song that I've, brought to the world to I, I don't hold too much ownership over that because it wasn't really me to begin with and then you also you snap out of it and you're like oh mm-hmm. um 
So I don't know. I just really fortunate to be in a position to, to share that ex- same experience with other people who, who feel the same way. And, mm-hmm. and we all kind of connect on that level. And that's what makes it so special. Most experiences, people that I've talked to where stuff has been used, a lot of it is YouTube videos and a lot of them are makeup or gaming videos. That was such a nice answer that you gave, but I'm sitting there thinking like, yeah, a lot of people use it for how they apply makeup. It is definitely one of the huge ones. And those are the cool thing about those is that those get tons and tons and tons and tons of hits. It's exposure. Like it's really good. That was kind of my thought. Like exposure is exposure. If something is getting a lot of traction or attention, like throwing my song in the background. I don't really have an issue with that at all. I think it's awesome. Yeah. And I I think it it would, it's a compliment for someone to be like, I like this and I want it to be in the background or whatever. I mean, obviously, yeah, if it's like something shitty, (laughs) you know, (laughs) I don't want to be like, oh yeah, yeah, Audio Farm endorses this. I do believe that the music industry is, is going through a really interesting stage right now. I do know that there are uh, a lot of really, 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 really cool bands that are playing out and working very hard to get their music out in the underground music scene uh, that deserve attention and that it's really complicated to be able to find them nowadays because nowadays you go to have to go hunting for them on YouTube or online mm-hmm. or bump into them because a friend recommended or whatnot. So mm-hmm. if I could say anything at all... I'd say, you know, keep your ears, you know, open to, to what's going on because there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on. A lot of people don't know about it. So mm-hmm. yeah. it deserves also, to be exposed. Don't be afraid to go out and see a show on a Wednesday night. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you, your mind might be blown. Like, exactly. I went out last Wednesday and saw a band at the high noon. Man, they, the main squeeze just ripped it apart, mm. man. They were so good. It was crazy. It was like a Wednesday night. And it was, like, packed. What compelled you to actually go out that night? Well, we were filming them in the morning. Oh, you were? Okay. Yeah, so we were filming them. We were doing an acoustic, like, session over at the music studio, Audio for the Arts. We just went out and saw them because they were playing, like, down the street. Things are, are so yeah. cool because there's you're not competing with all yeah. the other acts that are happening on a weekend. Mm-hmm. And those might be national acts coming in at the Overture Center. There's musicals and all that kind of stuff that people have time on the weekend to see that. So... On a Wednesday night, it's like you're competing with, it's like, do we go out and see this awesome band or stay home and watch Netflix? Playing any part in a live performance is still like gold standard entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Like yes. being there, performing, whatever. Like that's the best way to do it. Right. Yeah. Being with other people. And, and we're lucky too in the city because the city has a very diverse music scene. You know, mm-hmm. we have really good reggae bands, really good band, African bands, and we have very interesting bands that are playing Brazilian music and mm-hmm. awesome rock bands and some weird electronic freaks and us. And so <laughs> at the end of the day, it's like really diverse and really good musicians. And uh, one of the problems that I see with the Madison music scene is that a lot of people aren't willing to pay a cover or don't like to pay a cover. And I think it's kind of like a, a local kind of mentality. Of, of going to a bar and saying, okay, well, this awesome band is playing for $5, that might be a make or break to be able to go in the door. So at the end of the day, as Skylar said, I do, do say I encourage people, take advantage of this diverse yeah. music scene. Go out, see live bands. I'm going to say pay a cover, but mm-hmm. but it's $5, $10, $15 to be able to enjoy uh, a really, really good show. When we're at home practicing writing songs or recording in the studio and trying to document stuff, yeah, that's very much time for us to get all all up in our feelings and and grow as as people but when we go out to put perform a show it's for the people that, that support us we're that's like our that's us thanking you let us play for you this isn't for us so come out and let us play for you it's not about the money <laughs> <laughs> well it kind of is but If you'd like to check out Audio Farm and hear more of their music and learn more about them, you can just search for Audio Farm on Facebook. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to this podcast at lorenzosmusic.com, and that's also where you can download all of our music for free. Next week on the show, I'm actually going to be talking to a couple of filmmakers that made a film and used our music for it. So until next time, I'll talk to you later. <laughs>